بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم I am Dr. Iyad Al-Rubi again with you Urology Consultant uh, Today our lecture will be about the benign prostatic hyperplasia It is a common disease, age-related disease to have benign prostatic hyperplasia The prevalence of the of histologic benign prostatic hyperplasia in autopsy studies rises from approximately it is thought from age 41 to 50 it will be around 20 percent, uh, 50 percent in men aged 51 to 60, and more than 90 percent of men older than 80 years old will have benign prostatic hyperplasia. What is the etiology of this uh, disease? Actually, the cause is not completely understood, but there is a lot of theories. Uh, first of these is hormonal testosterone estrogen balance, uh, prostatic growth factors, uh, increased stem cells and decreased stem cell death. Dihydrotestosterone actually is very important factor and from this point of view we are or in neurology planned to treat this uh, disease. Is it hyperplasia or hypertrophy? It is hyperplasia. Hyperplasia uh, increased the cell's number other than the size of the cell. Uh, I need you to know that the prostate is formed from three components. We have stroma, we have smooth muscles, we have glands or epithelium. Uh, what zone of disease or which zone disease is this? Is that the prostatic enlargement or benign prostatic hyperplasia? It is the transition zone enlargement. Uh, if I want to ask a question here, the prostate cancer, which zone disease? It is peripheral zone disease. Why patient can get symptoms after having benign prostatic hyperplasia? Because you know the location of the prostate is in the base of the bladder and transiting which component or which, or which component of the urethra transiting the prostate is the prostatic urethra that meaning is being around the urethra and enlargement of this prostate as it will be enlarged peripherally it will enlarge also centrally inside that it will cause obstructive voiding symptoms it will narrow and obstruct the lumen of the urethra as you can see in this slide the bladder and the prostate in the base of the bladder. In the left side you see down the prostatic enlarged bilateral kissing loops that it make the urethra more narrow. In the left side in the upper uh, photo there is another uh, usually loop, third loop is median loop. As you can see there, there is protruded loop inside the bladder. Meaning, usually when we are doing cystoscopy, we can see bilateral kissing loops, left and right. But sometimes there will be third loop, which is 
located in the level of Bladernik, which we called uh, median lobe. Median lobe, this lobe will be protruded inside the uh, bladder. And I need you to remember this part because in treatment, when we discuss the treatment, this median lobe will not be affected properly by medical treatment. Uh, as I told you, when <coughs> the prostate will narrow the prostatic urethra or obstruct the prostatic urethra, patient will come with obstructive voiding symptoms. Type. Is it only obstructive voiding symptoms? No. The bladder will be affected after some times and the patient will come with storage also uh, symptoms, storage bladder symptoms, which we called it also a repetitive voiding <coughs> symptoms. Sorry. As you can see in this slide, in the right side, normal bladder, exactly we see the bladder in this, when we are doing cystoscopy, the inside surface of the bladder will be smooth like this. And you can see the prostate is not obstructing the prostatic urethra. But in the left side, there is a lot of changes happen to this the bladder and to the prostatic urethra. The lumen became more narrow, that meaning it is obstructed. And as you can see, uh, the bladder, there is a lot of changes in the bladder itself. You know, we have the most uh, important component in the structure of the bladder is the trousal muscle. And maybe you remember from the anatomy of the bladder that these smooth muscle fibers arranged, which I mean the trousal muscles, arranged randomly. Why arranged randomly? To help the bladder when it will be contracted, it will uh, contract equally in all over the cavity and it will expel the urine outside. When the bladder, when the prostate will make obstruction, this muscle will work more and more. It will do more exercise. It will force the urine to come out. That meaning these fibers, which are arranged randomly, will become more hypertrophied. Hypertrophied. This will end up or we can see it as trabocalation in the bladder. Trabocalation when we go and do cystoscopy will see instead of seeing the smooth surface of the inside lumen of the bladder we'll see trabocalations muscular bladder. The, the fiber of the trousal muscle we can see it easily. Uh, if the obstruction not result and not solve this problem, the, path the pathology will progress and there will be some uh, seculis or seculi uh, and again if this problem not resolved or not solved uh, it will become or form diverticuli. Uh, what is the definition of the diverticuli? As you remember from uh, surgery or sigmoid or sigmoid uh, diverticulums for example what is the def definition of the diverticulum definition is out pouching of mucosa between muscle fibers exactly which also happening in this uh, condition Uh, presentation as I told you, patient will come with with lower urinary tract symptoms, lots we call it lower urinary tract symptoms. Patient can come with acute urinary tension, 
uh, if patient have long standing uh, obstruction this will uh, cause reflux of urine to the kidneys and will cause renal impairment you will find some patients coming to you first presentation is renal failure I have recently one patient which came with 23 creatinine level 23 and potassium was more than 7 without diagnosing him before that this patient has been hyperosalic hyperplasia uh, by doing ultrasound he found huge amount of urine inside the bladder catheter polycatheter inserted and patient drained within the first two hours around four to five liters of urine that meaning this patient has chronic urine tension which affected his kidneys and he and sadly this was the first presentation for this patient overflow incontinence please keep in your mind that when anyone will call you in the future from medical department for example to evaluate one patient with incontinence old especially if he is old age uh, male think about overflow incontinence overflow incontinence like you have a cup and you are filling it with water or floods after filling it totally completely the extra floods will come out with the flow out this is the overflow incontinence and you can diagnose it easily by palpation that you can have or found appreciate uh, distended bladder over distended bladder or you can do ultrasound that you will find a huge amount of urine inside the bladder some patients can be discovered incidentally asymptomatic they are and just by doing another ultrasound for another purposes you can find these patients incidentally that they have in larger prostate the normal volume of the prostate is around 25 cc or mil and this is the by ultrasonist or ultrasonography radiologist you can or they can find for example 50 40 prostate i have patient with 20 280 prostate grams prostate which they don't have symptoms Uh, when you are getting cancer from the patient with benign prostatic hyperplasia, you will concentrate on different things. Most of the important part from, from this history is the LUTs, lower urinary tract symptoms. We can put LUTs into two categories, obstructive LUTs and irritative LUTs or storage LUTs. Hesitancy, you know from the symptoms lecture, it is delayed to initiate the urination, voiding by straining, intermittency, the stream, weak stream, dribbling or post void dribbling, sense of incomplete emptying, nocturia. And I told you before, whenever you are talking about nocturia, please mention the number, number of voiding or going to bathroom you will see it to tell nocturia two to three times per night because one time is a nocturia and five times also nocturia but the bother sum is different frequency and urgency in history also you will take bowel habit history if this patient has constipation because it would affect the flow of urine or especially in old age group. You will take neurologic history if this patient has old CVA or low back pain or another neurologic problems that may be giving or raise the suspicion of having neurogenic bladder, for example. What is the complication of long standing or benign prostatic hyperplasia as all? Well? Uh, as we told, mentioned maybe will come with the retention, acute urine retention or chronic urine retention. You know the difference, guys, between the uh, acute and chronic urine retention. Yes, 
acute will be painful retention painful acute urinary retention this will be painful the chronic usually is not painful what else are there another differences uh, the volume when you will drain the patient with acute urinary retention mostly they will drain maximum 600-700 ml of water, of urine I mean. But in chronic retention you will find these patients can drain more than one liter of urine without feeling any pain. The current urine tract infection, yes, patients with the current urine tract infection, you suspect that these patients in this age group, old age group that he has in this male patients that they can have uh, benign prostatic hyperplasia. Uh, by stagnation or incomplete post void residual urine or incomplete evacuation of the urine from the bladder, there will be stagnated urine. If stagnated urine will cause precipitation of this urine, Precip precipitation of the crystal, so, uh, sorry, and it can form bladder stones. As mentioned just two three minutes back, renal failure, the reflux during to, to the long standing reflux over the kidney, it will affect the kidneys and can cause increased renal function test. Hematuria, congested and sometimes infected prostate can cause hematuria, recurrent attacks of hematuria. Bladder diverticulum, as we mentioned, long standing obstruction also can cause bladder diverticulae. Why patients can get hernias or hemorrhoids? You know, some patients can use abdominal wall muscles to expel their urine outside. They will strain. I, by straining, these patients can get hernias or hemorrhoids. A lot of times we are uh, receiving a lot of patients referred from general surgery department as they are diagnosing them with hernias or hemorrhoids and by taking history in general surgery department they found these patients as prostatic enlargements and they used to strain to expel the urine out by that they are treating or requesting us to treat the primary cause original cause before treating the hernia or hemorrhoid. They are sending them to us for uh, our opinion, opinion and usually we are treating the banana prostatic hyperplasia before treating the uh, sending him back to the general surgeon to treat the hernia or hemorrhoid. Physical examination usually you will palpate the, the abdomen and sometimes with inspection you can appreciate the distended bladder and by percussion or palpation you can easily diagnose it if this patient has urine tension. <coughs> Digital rectal examination or PR before we used to say PR we are in neurology this terminology changed to digital rectal examination. What you are looking for as I mentioned <coughs> before sorry you will see anal tone that can give you an idea about the neurologic situation or of these patients then you will or you will uh, feel the prostate or your index finger what you are looking for the prostate the external service is it soft or not or hard or fair if there is any appreciated nodules, the service it is smooth or not, is the both lobes, left and right lobe, is symmetrical or are symmetrical or not, uh, the median sulcus preserved or not, the lateral ferrous or opened or closed, and the prostate, how mucosal of the rectum mobile over the prostate or not. We diagnosed or we put the differential diagnosis or the initial diagnosis of benign prostatic hyperplasia. 
the next step the after history of physical examination the next step will be lab investigation what we are asking in lab investigation we are usually uh, ask for simple urine routine examination that we can find infection we can find signs of hem uh, microscopic hematuria proteins with this long standing obstruction CBC is important if you are suspecting infection yes you can ask for CBC renal function test if you are suspecting of chronic retention you will ask for renal function test PSA is very important uh, it is completely test prostatic specific antigen to rule out presence of malignancy prostatic adenocarcinoma uh, after doing lab investigation we will go further for doing imaging imaging usually we are asking for uh, ultrasound uh, examination or ultrasound imaging Uh, <coughs> we have more uh, <coughs> more advanced uh, investigations that we can ask for for example urine flowmetry where measure the strength of urine and the pattern of urine by doing urine flowmetry there is a machine that the patient can void in it and we can see uh, the volume, the QMATS, maximum flow rate, and the pattern of the graph, how with this patient is void, and it is not doing as a routine. We have also international prosthetic symptom score. This is questionnaire that the patient can fill it. As you can see here, there is f uh, seven uh, indicator or seven component of this. Uh, by putting uh, scores, uh, seven symptom each will be from five uh, by calculating the seven it will be the sum 35 is this is the sum of this uh, uh, scores will be less than six or six and less it will be mild symptoms if it is 19 and less to six will be moderate and it's more than 19 will be severe uh, symptoms what's the benefit of this score this is score if you are doing it in the first presentation of the patient and you follow if you will follow the patient uh, and do it after treatment you can see the difference between the score is uh, this patient improved or not and it can sometimes help you in deciding about uh, definitive treatment of these patients uh, <coughs> differential diagnosis urethral structure bladder neck contractures prosthetic cancer bladder cancer which is near to the bladder neck bladder stones infection or prostatitis because it can cause uh, edema in the prostate and cause some obstruction or neurogenic bladder how we can treat patient with banana prostatic hyperplasia uh, we can do only watchful waiting or behavioral modification yani in the other shape or in the other how we can i can explain this to you if this patient have mild symptoms for example the international prosthetic symptom score is mild <coughs> mild symptoms usually you can offer this patient's uh, watchful waiting just you can give him some instructions that this patient will not need more treatment is it 
mandatory to give any patient with benign prostatic hyperplasia any treatment? No. I need to know one thing. The symptoms is not related to the volume of the prostate. Yani, sometimes we find a patient with 30 grams prosthetic size with severe symptoms. Maybe they can have four or five times nicturia and they are, this patient bothered a lot. But we can find another patient and I have one patient with 80, 20, 280 grams of prostate and they are not working one time during night to go to bathroom. Yani, not every patient with enlarged prostate needs treatment. We are treating if patients if they has symptoms. Uh, if we decide to treat, as I told you, if he ha they has mild symptoms, just you can do watchful waiting. Uh, you can instruct the patient to do uh, some behavioral modifications like decrease diuretics like caffeine and not to drinking a large amounts of fluid over short time, period of time uh, maintain normal fluid intake uh, avoid bladder irritants like salty uh, spicy foods and for example limiting the two three hours for sleeping limiting the fluids intake if we'll decide the next level of treatment if we'll give we'll start with medical treatment remember i told you the three component of prostate is stroma smooth muscle and gland or glands uh, we'll targeting these stromas difficult to treat or not will target the smooth muscle and the glands mainly there is some herbal uh, medicine or medications that is like sobal uh, but the cornerstone of medical treatment for prostatic hyperplasia is the alpha blockers uh, this alpha blockers we have very large family of alpha blockers before doxazosine terazosine uh, and this is non-selective alpha blockers that it used to do hypotensive or hypotension in some patients. Now in the era of the progression of the manufacture of the drugs, they found the alpha zucine. Alpha zucine is selective alpha blocker that will affect this, the prostatic and the blood and neck area. Now the most advanced drug is the tamsulacin. Tamsulacin is affecting or it is super selective alpha blocker that will affect uh, alpha A1 blocker uh, the receptors in the area of the prostate and blood and neck. And in the stone lecture, it is found also affecting the lower one third of the ureter that it, we are using this drug in uh, lower ureteric stones as it's external, external expulsive therapy. Uh, the other target is the glands or the epithelium. Remember that we told that dihydrotestosterone is affecting directly the active form of testosterone affecting the, the uh, prostate uh, aggressively or very effectively for this reason we'll target this uh, drug will prevent conversion testosterone to the hydrotestosterone active form by 5 alpha reductase inhibitors we have finasteride and tetasteride but the problem in this drug to be effective it needs to be taken for long period of time yani for at least yani around six months to see the benefit over your patient or over the size of the state and this is not the issue in the alpha blocker that if you are giving alpha blocker for this patients you can appreciate the 
immediate response within first two three days you can the patient can appreciate the difference in their uh, stream or uh, urinary stream uh, most of the time or a lot of times we are doing combination of treatment between this and that alpha blocker will, will function quickly and for long period of time the alpha alpha reductase will be more effective but here please there is one two uh, notes or two important thing I need you to remember in younger patient for example in sexual active patient not important how old they are they for example six year olds years old patient with who is sexually active when you give him five alpha reductase inhibitor you will block the conversion to active form which is dihydrotestosterone that it can affect or usually it will affect his libido and um, erection and this is very important you need to counsel it with your patient before prescribing this kind of medication uh, a lot of patients coming to me and they used to suffer from erectile dysfunction and by taking drug history we found this patient is taking pres uh, 5-alpha detectase inhibitor for a long period of time without telling them that it will affect their perf sexual performance and this is very important please you need to aware your patient because when you are counseling the patients a lot of them they are refusing to take this kind of drug uh, because sexual life also it is important for them the other thing in this 5-alpha detectase inhibitor it is uh, decreasing the uh, PSA by 50% around 50% yani if you are if you have patient on 5 alpha detectase inhibitor with PSA 5, 3 for example this is not really 3 it is 6 because it is decreasing the uh, PSA level to the half take in your consideration when you are evaluating the patient with nanoprostatic hyperplasia on 5 alpha reductase inhibitors that if they are on this drug the PSA will you will multiply it by 2 and accordingly you will proceed for treatment this is in this slide the alpha A1 receptors where it is located uh, now let's say patient is not willing to go or to continue on medical treatment for his own causes uh, or when the conditions of having severe symptoms or with complications of benign prostatic hyperplasia if patient will, will come with these complications like I will let, let you know now like for example renal insufficiency, bladder stones, recurrent attacks of UTI, recurrent attacks of retention, recurrent attacks of uh, hematuria and that condition you will uh, skip the medica medication or to start medication and you will do definitive surgical treatment or if this, the patient comes with severe symptoms you need to offer or moderate symptoms in IPSS you will offer for him also surgical treatment maybe he will uh, need to rid up from this problem forever what kind of surgical procedures we have actually we have open surgery before they used to do only when simple prostatectomies now we have a lot of kinds of uh, minimally invasive surgeries and scopic urologic surgeries but the gold standard in this days, the long time is to RP transfer thread section of the prostate. We have another modalities of treatment like tumor transfer thread microwave therapy, tuna trans urethral needle ablation, ablation, uh, tube or tube transfer thread section of the prostate, transfer thread vaporization of the prostate. But the two RP is the gold standard. Uh, of the treatment this is an example of micro 
we have therapy for the prostate this is needle ablation but as I mentioned not of the most of these kind of surgeries not of the approved till now but the gold standard is the TRP or simple prostatectomy uh, usually if you are doing TRP the outcome or the response will be more than uh, 80 to 90 per percent of patients will have very good uh, results uh, and if the prostate is small we are doing TUIP transfer transition of prostate that we are doing incision in the level of the bladder neck according to the guidelines if the prostate is less than 75 grams we are offering TRP for these patients if larger than 75 grams you will offer a subrobic or retrobic approach for open prostatectomy but most of the time there is operator dependent or surgical dependent uh, excuses that a patient, if the surgeon is quick, quicker or faster or fast doing the surgery sometimes uh, 150 180 we can do uh, TRP and here in Gaza we are doing the sizes also by TRP this, this is exactly what we are doing we are doing, taking chips by using the loop by inside uh, a sheet uh, using electro surgical unit to cauterize and cut disc uh, chips and I remember I uh, showed you this in the instrumentation the lecture of the instrumentation neurology this is exactly the loop when you are cutting the prosthetic chips what is the complications of TRP risk of incontinence less than one percent and usually lucky alhamdulillah we don't have incontinence here if you are preserving or maintaining or uh, saving insistingly the stated sphincter because you know we have smooth sphincter in the level of the blood and neck and we have the straighted sphincter which is exactly distal to the uh, the smooth sphincter which is involuntary and the straighted sphincter is voluntary when we are doing TRB, we are removing the bladder neck with the prostate that meaning no anymore smooth sphincter will be there then the patient will, will uh, maintain his continence by using the straighted sphincter uh, the voluntary one for this season it is important to save and maintain the contents by saving this uh, sphincter is very crucial uh, it can cause some decline in erectile function but if patient is good before surgery will be good again after surgery retrograde ejaculation because we are removing also as I mentioned as intrinsic sphincter uh, these patients will have retrograde ejaculation during surgery some patient can get uh, post or TRP syndrome why they are getting this you know we are doing this using especially when you're zoom, using this using monopolar we are doing we are using hypotonic solutions like a glycine uh, there is by resecting the chips of the prostate there will be some sinuses that there's some uh, be some absorption of this hypotonic flows to the bladder circulation to the uh, body circulation sorry that will cause dilution and hyponatremia and because of hyponatremia you can get the signs and symptoms of hyponatremia starting from from the confusion blurred vision up to the coma for this season usually we are doing as a routine this is a procedure within one hour and a half not more than this time because they found in neurology that this time usually patient will be safe from to have uh, post-TRB syndrome. 
bleeding yes it can be uh, because of that we are preparing usually two units of blood before doing two RB surgery but rarely rarely we are using this blood bladder neck contracture some patients can come with uh, months after the procedure with pointing difficulty and when you will uh, investigate this patient you will find the bladder neck contracted very small very narrow uh, this is mostly due to healing by fibrosis in this area that will be obstructed again and you need to incise this uh, platonic contracture this is an example for trans urethra incision of the prostate this modality of treatment we are using in smaller prostate in 30 or 20 25 grams of prostate uh, with signs of obstruction or if you will go with the cystoscope and find this this uh, size is also causing some obstruction for example, in the form of high blood neck. This is an example for open surgery, transpecycle or Melens retrobuc uh, procedures or approach. We are opening the bladder and doing inoculation of the prostate using our index finger, as you can see in this slide. This is different modalities. Uh, now, no anymore, anyone use perineal uh, approach. A complications, bleeding, uh, pain, uh, infection, erectile dysfunction. Uh, urine, urine contents and the structure. If we have patient with uh, a lot of comorbidities for example not fit for anesthesia or uh, these patients with anticoagulants and they can't stop it there is a stents, permanent stents that we can put inside the prosthetic urethra uh, and you keep it open that we can solve the problem of in, in the obstruction uh, we have lasers but as I told you, it is not as a gold standard. Uh, we have Helmia Miyagi laser and we have green light lasers. In the green light, we do evaporation of the prostate. This is a usually used uh, type of surgery for a medium size or smaller size of prostate, like 40 grams. Uh, and if it is large uh, prostates, we are using uh, inoculation, helium laser inoculation of the prostate. Uh, and this is just to know about this uh, kind of or modality of the treatment. Thank you.